Okay, let's compare the impact of an expansionary fiscal policy with that of a contractionary monetary policy in the ISLA model. Now, an expansionary fiscal policy means government spending increase and or taxes decrease. We will simply assume there's an increase in government spending, talking about expansionary fiscal policy. Now, in terms of your model, uh, expansionary fiscal policy will shift the IS curve to the right. And as you can see, the end result in this case is an increase in the level of output. So we can say there's an increase in output when you use an expansionary fiscal policy. Looking at your contractionary monetary policy, which means that it's a decrease in the money supplied by the central bank, there will be an upward shift of the LM curve. And as you can see, we end up with a lower level of output. So one result is that in the case of a expansionary fiscal policy, there's an increase in output. A, a contractionary monetary policy, you have a decrease in output. Let's look at the interest rate. So from this model, you can see there's an increase in the interest rate. That's the end result. There's this increase in the interest rate. Going to contractionary monetary policy, you see the same thing. There is also an increase in the interest rate. The question is now, what is the cause of this increase in the interest rate? And that's where the difference is. If you look at this model, we say that the increase in output increases the demand for money, which increases the interest rate. So that is the reason why the interest rate is higher. In this model, we will say, well, there's a decrease in the supply of money, which then leads to an increase in the interest rate. So you can see the reason for the difference. If we take it one step further now, is the argument is, well, if you have an increase in the interest rate, you will have a decrease in investment spending because there's a negative relationship between the interest rate and investment spending. But we also know that there's a positive relationship between output and investment. As output increases, investment increases. In this case, we can't really say what is the net effect. We are sort of unsure. We will say it's indeterminate because we, have, we need more information here to determine whether it will be higher, lower, or the same. If you look in the case of a contractionary monetary policy, once again, an increase in the interest rate will decrease investment spending. What we have here is, however, also a decrease in the level of output, which will decrease the level of investment spending. So we are pretty sure that in this model, investment spending is lower. So that, that is sort of the difference between these two models. Now, if you look in terms of the demand for goods, Z equals C plus I plus G, in the case of an expansionary fiscal policy, we know government spending is higher at this point here. We know consumption spending is also higher because income is higher. But like we said, we are a bit unsure about investment spending. Looking at the contractionary monetary policy, Z equals C plus I plus G. First of all, we know government spending is the same. It's an exogenous variable. We haven't changed that value. We know investment spending is lower because of the high interest rate and the lower output. And we know that consumption spending is lower because output is lower. So there you have your sort of similarities and differences between the impact of an expansionary fiscal policy compared to a contractionary monetary policy.